So this might be the highest spinning wedge that I have ever tested. It is called the Spin Doctor, which for an absolutely horrendously cheesy name, I actually quite like. So I bought this club off Amazon, but to be honest, with all like the dinks and scratches and marks on it, I don't know if I accidentally selected second hand. It's not arrived in the best condition. And from behind and from the bottom, it just looks like a normal wedge, but it's when you start to focus on the face with all these crazy rubber ridges going on, that is where you start to notice that something strange is going on. One of the things which sets this wedge apart is you get replacement faces. So there's a slot in the back of the wedge, you can just pop the face out. And you've got the same type of face, these rubber ones, but you've also got this. So this has the feel and the consistency of sandpaper. See, I like to test clubs out with proper balls. So whichever ball gets pulled out of my bag, is gonna be sacrificed to the sandpaper gods, I'm afraid. The grip on this is very thin, looks like it's 1980s. The shaft is a true temper, I think it's a regular. When the club goes behind the ball, there's this gigantic offset, and on this 60 degree club head, it does look like there's a massive black hole right in the middle. Now we're also gonna be testing this wedge out on a night golf course, on a par three course. Now this is illegal, and I'm guessing that's because of the face insert. Let's see what it's like around the screen. I came out very low and very checky straight away. Actually feels quite nice. Those first two, loads and loads of grab, and that other one just popped up. Wow. Gonna hit some shots over there. I think I've found the sweet spot on it straight away. Oh, that sounded good, didn't it? Oh, hello. Right, okay, so if I just lay the face open a little bit, just try and let that club head pass the hands, then it just seems to roll up the face a little bit more. It's just slightly, wow, struck that. Um, it's just slightly disconcerting when you put it down because that leaning edge seems to protrude like in front of the face quite a lot. So the actual middle of the face looks like it's sat back. Almost like you could just... Yeah, like that. <laughs> it kind of just stays in the face. Right, 50 yarder, more of a pitch. I'm expecting to see some action on this. Ooh, that like pitched on the down slope, that. Oh my God, that's good. That, that sounded amazing, didn't it? I'm pitching them in like the same spot. So opening this club up in the bunker actually oddly makes it look better which I didn't think would be possible, but it does. I don't know, kind of like the bounce angle on this. It does have some, but I wouldn't exactly say that's the most adaptable flange in the world. <laughs> Behaving like a normal bunker shot. <laughs> First one as well. <laughs> well. It's getting underneath the ball, okay, but. behaving like a sand wedge. Look at these, one absolute travesty. Like a tiger's been at it. Look at that, like it's been mauled. Yeah, they're not like rubbing off, they're actually proper scars on the ball. Okay, not done this before. Don't know how to do it. There's a hole in the back, which I'm gonna try and press a T through. Actually, no, I might try and press this through. So this is a shaft kind of sleeve adapter. So, oh yeah, there we go. Oh, right. As far as club face goes, there's really no, no kind of wear on it. Obviously, I need to be doing a lot more uh, hitting with this to actually see when this wears out, but there are some dinks on it. Maybe you'll see there. Oh man, right. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit chips, a couple of pitches, and I do need to test it out with some fuller shots, which we're gonna do at the academy course just to see what the spin differences are. It's a better shot, if anything I'll say is maybe Less backspin there initially. I could already see half a Pro V on the face. I'll tell you what, that was a terrible strike, it's done well.
do get the sense on that pitch shot, it's just going to be absolutely deadly. Oh wow, oh god, I found it. I found the spot, I found the swing on it. I mean, I don't know why, because I know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm excited to see the backspin. At the same time, we have destruction being raw on the ball. Od oddly enough, oh! God, it's got through to like the second core. Oddly enough though, I think we actually saw more spin on the rubber insert. So we'll try this out as well as the rubber insert around the floodlit par three course at Yass. But apart from like scratching up the surface, and feeling a bit heavier, I think the rubber insert offered a little bit more. So we're down here at Yas Links, we're on the par three course, but we're gonna be hitting from lots of different distances. So with the lob wedge, I mean, I'm gonna be able to hit this about 90 yards maximum, I think. This first hole we're gonna be hitting from 60 yards, we've got the quad out, and I just wanna see the differences between this and the types of spin that I would be seeing with a normal wedge. I'm gonna be using this weird sandpaper face for the first few holes, and then I'll switch it over to the rubber face for the last five. Yeah, this doesn't feel like anywhere near as spinny as like that other face. I don't really know why this is in here, because if it's not spinning as much, then what's the point? <laughs> Apart from just destroying golf balls. Backspin at about 3,000 with those shots there. So yeah, I mean, again, less than I'd expect over a 60 yard shot. So we've got like a little bare lie here as the, as the Flying Aces roller coaster flies. So I should be able to get some real nippy shots off here. It's actually coming out really accurate. I'm quite surprised. So full swing there, backspin 10,000. Yeah, that's like literally what I'd be, I'd be expecting more than that with my Adele's. Back in the stance, that looks really good actually. Yeah, it's just drop and stop, backspin. Backspin 6,000. Really not feeling it with that sandpaper face. Okay, let's do this one more time. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. We are ready with a new face. I do like the simplicity of that. I mean, there's obviously a fair bit of waste goes on when you stick a new face in there, but so this is something which has been thought of before, but if you think about replacement faces, most handicapped golfers aren't gonna replace their wedges after a year, not two years, maybe not even three years. So a company would have to make sure that they manufacture replacement faces over a period of about five to 10 years if they want to keep those wedges current, just not going to happen. People are just going to buy new wedges. So that's why they've never taken off. And that's why something like this won't take off. However, I'm excited about the spin now. Oh, wow. These are proper just ripping off the front now. All right, let's try and get one over the top of the pin. Give it a bit more juice. Ooh, just imagine holding one, spinning it back in. Go on, get past it, get past it, get past it. Oh, I just can't get it past and it's ripping back. So we're getting about 13,000 backspin. So the first thing we can take from this is that that sandpaper face, literally trash. However, this rubber face, if you are looking for the spin. So we know what this is like off a of fairway lie. What's this going to be like out of? The thick stuff here. Let's see if we can generate any spin from here, crikey. I'll tell you what, actually felt quite nice that. Oh, spin. Oh, that is impressive. So we're still spinning high here. We're spinning into 9,000 territory out of these lights. Oh, look at the spin on that. Because it's down in the rough, but it's sat up above the roots. It's striking right in the middle. That low flight, when it goes low like that, that's just a sign that it is ripping. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. 